So now I'm going to talk about what you actually need to make with scenery. So remember, this is how I am making reads. Different people use different things. And throughout the video, I will talk about maybe what's different or how different people will do different things or different styles. So just keep your ears up for that. Okay. So first things first, probably need some cane. Um, I know it might be hard to say, see, but this is cane, and I will talk about this more um, when we actually start making the reads. What it is, you can buy them online. Um, real people, or people who actually make their reads like completely from bamboo cane scratch, that's awesome. I don't have time for that, and I'm a beginner. Um, but you can just buy cane. Like I said, mine comes in a little nice tube. Um, but you can buy cane at, online or in actual music stores. Um, I'm going to show you my two favorite places. <laughs> Just the first one is called Forest Music. If you're on the West Coast, this is a great double read store. You can either buy them online. And then also this Miller Marketing Company. Um, I like them for my cane. A, because it's it's more on my budget, and it's actually like $4.60 or something like that per piece, and which is really nice. Or you can get packages of 10 or 12, and this is pretty standard actually for most stores. But when you buy your cane, you want to make sure that it's shaped, gouged, and profiled. What that means is that you actually have given it a, let me show you again, a nice hourglass shape, and then it actually is thinned out in the middle. I know you can see the bark on the ends so it's been gauged and shaped and then profiled so that it's actually thinner in the middle and that you can see that there's eventually you'll see a line. So now that we have the cane, um, another important aspect is that you need needleless pliers, yay! Um, and you also need wire cutters, mine comes with it. Some people get different sizes depending on your hands, this is just what I had and so that's what I'm using. Um, another useful thing is a bunch of files. I just bought these in the hardware store. Actually, most of my supplies all came from hardware stores, or I made them. There's only a couple things I bought. Um, but these files, you only really need one or two. You know, files, we have sandpaper, and you can get different types. You don't really need a whole sheet, but I know that's when it comes in sometimes. Um, you want a softer, finer sand versus a coarser. And I also like to have the emery boards, like nail files. Um, I just got these at the dollar store. Um, I like these for the end product, not really the beginning. It's a little harsh to me. So, sandpaper, very useful. You will need a ruler. doesn't matter if it's metric or inches. You will need nail polish. Some people use Duco cement glue. Um, I don't like the fumes, so I use nail polish also because it was only 60 cents. And it's clear. You can get clear. Pencils. Pencils always good, especially in music. <laughs> um, a nice coated paper clip and then a razor. Now I like this just because again this is what I had in my house for some reason um, but I like this. The most important part though is the actual razor blade. You need this. Some people just use a blade, some people use this aspect. I actually use both because my hands are really small. And then we have Brass wire gauge, it's not a slinky. <laughs> um, soft brass wire gauge and right now mine's a little tangled but there's different gauges. Um, I bought this a long time ago at a hardware store. Mine's actually heavier than I guess what most people use. Some people recommend a 22, 21. Some people recommend a 42. It really depends on your style, but this is for the wires on your reed. And we need thread for the wrapping. Um, this is actually... There's different types of thread. It's not sewing thread. I have to be clear about that. It's not sewing thread because it's actually a thick, thicker material. And if you've ever seen a bassoon read close up, you'll know what I mean by thicker material. Um, you can actually buy reed making thread online <laughs> or in a store. That's what you can do. Um, more of a double reed store, not a hardware store. But, but the point is you can't have thin thread because the thread is actually used to support the back of the reed. So that's why you need thread. Any different colors, and that's the fun part because you can make your read are colorful and there's multicolor threads. You can have orange and pink or blue or purple or whatever you want. Okay. Uh, and then this is called a dowel. Um, there's other names too, but just be simple a dowel. What it is is just a piece of wood. 
and <laughs> really and I made this my roommates and I we made this at the store and what it is is we just chopped off a pole um, and then we just sanded it down so it was smooth but I will note I don't know if you see those two lines on the end right here those are actually um, it's thinner in the middle than on the edges and this gives a ledge so I can put the cane on to support when I'm cutting into it so or you can actually buy an official double reed making pole if you want. All right, almost done. Um, another important part is this uh, triangle arrowhead looking thing. It's called a plaque, and you use this to support the reed when you're filing down the tip. Uh, and you will need a beveled knife, and just you just want a sharp, not too sharp, obviously, to cut yourself. But you are shaving the wood. And these come in different sizes or different textures. It's really your choice. Um, there's also an uh, instrument called a reamer. I won't really talk about this very much. Um, I guess right now is my only time. If you're making a reed and what you do is it hollows out the back end so that way if it doesn't fit on your vocal you can actually hollow it out. I will comment this right now that you should never ream wet because when your reeds, when you wet them they actually expand and so if you wet it so you expand it and then you hollow it out more it actually be really, really big on your vocal and it won't fit which is pointless because then you don't have a reed to play on uh, so this is all I'm going to say really about the reamer throughout the video but uh, it is useful if your reed um, dries up and it's too small and you can always open it up more um, and then uh, this is a cutting block and it came in a kit, and I'll show you the kit in a second. Um, it's a cutting block. It's also called a billet. That's the official word. And it will be used for cutting, obviously. Mine has a velvet bottom just so that it doesn't slip around when I'm cutting, which is great. And then probably the second most important thing, aside from the cane, is the actual mandrel. And these come in either the tips um, or just this whole thing and they come in different sizes because depending on what kind of reed you're making or if you're vocal especially like contra bassoon I think you actually need a whole nother mandrel to have it big enough but yeah so there's your mandrel and then I also like and like I said mine came in like a whole kit where it holds all the the knife and the reamer and the billet and the plaque together and this I just bought online because that's you need a double you need this from a double reed store um, also, um, a few other accessories you need to have. You need some sort of like pot of water or container. For some people use jars and they'll seal up their cane and let it soak for days. Um, mine, I just use Tupperware. Yay! <laughs> or all those tools I just use in another piece of Tupperware. Um, and then some people actually use the Tupperware or a fishing box or a jewelry box, whatever is easier. It is easier to throw all your tools in one box and you can take them somewhere if you want to have a reed making party day. Woo! Um, yeah. And then I guess the last thing really drying rack, which I can show you here. Here's a picture. If you don't have one of those, which some people make homemade or they buy them, I haven't made or bought mine. Um, I actually use my little case because it has these little mandrel tips in it already plastic, but it does the purpose and you need a drying rack actually. Alright, and that is all of our tools so far and let's get started. So back to this cane. We're going to get started on making the sandry. The cane is very brittle because it's hard and it's very thin and pointy. You just want to be very careful. Actually, throughout this whole process, you're going to be very like concerned that it's really fragile and you don't want to drop it. If you drop it, it's not the end of the world, but just be careful. Um, so the cane is very fragile right now. As I mentioned earlier, it's already been gouged, shaped, and profiled. So what you're going to do with this, you actually have to let it soak because you can't work on a dry reed. It's not good. No bueno. <laughs> um, you can actually destroy a lot of the reed and it could crack just like that. So you want to make sure that you soak it. Unfortunately, it takes more than 10 minutes to soak this piece of cane. So what we're going to do is we're going to soak this in that tabouret of water and you'll leave it dry minimum or to soak minimum four hours. That's like bare minimum. Like you are in desperate need of a reed that needs to be made now. So you're going to soak this. I recommend 8 to 10 hours. Lisa sometimes says that a max of 12 hours. Some people say you can do two days. Some people will seal it up in a huge jar and leave it there till the, all the, the water is not clear anymore. I feel like that's going to mold. Um, but that's what people do. 
um, they would just want to make sure it's not dry. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the water, and I'll see you back in about eight hours.